and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed, make me sound like a chipmunk, and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device and you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps so if you are on a desktop you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well you can also enable subtitles and the little cc on the screen will enable closed captioning that way if i am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello. Hi, Justine. I hope you're having a good day. Thanks for joining. How are you all? We're not cutting today, we're sewing. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> it's like we skipped an important step, but we didn't. We cut this two weeks ago because we had some serious fabric Tetris going on that I had nothing to worry about. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Sue. Hi, Julie. It's good to see you all. <clears throat> Do you guys have a good weekend? Good week? I think I haven't, have I? Oh, I was live last week, that's right. I'm, I love that you guys are liking the drafting streams. You're gonna see more of that. Hello, Scrap and Diva, Felisa, welcome. A sew day for me, yay! You love to see it. Um, so, hi Kirsten, how's it going? Or Kirsten, that's my middle name, Kirsten. I actually think I pronounce it Kirsten. My mom pronounces it Kirsten, I'm not sure. And when my mom was having my, my sister, <laughs> I was like 12. She said I could, I could pick the middle name. <laughs> what does a 12 year old do? They're not very creative. They're either overly creative or, you know, not creative. And I gave her my middle name. So my sister and I have the same middle name. So that's how you say it too. I like, I like that way too, yeah. Um, all right, so um, I am making a 1930s inspired outfit for a wedding I'm going to this weekend where the theme is, um, the theme is masquerade, murder, and marriage. And yes, there is a a whole murder mystery thing we're going to solve there, which I'm looking forward to. Hi, Sue. And so uh, a couple weeks ago, I made the blouse, which is, it's just hanging on the form. I didn't want to put it on the form again because it's kind of a struggle because the form doesn't collapse, you know, and it's kind of grippy. Uh, plus, I just don't want it. I don't want to rip it or something silly like that. And uh, I'm going to take it home this week because I'm going to wear it this Saturday. So I'm making beach pajamas. Oh, do I have my like, I'm reaching for my mouse, but it's not there. Um, oh, I don't think I do. Do I have it? I can't actually tell. I'm scared to see what this is. Let's see, I'm gonna switch back to my, what is this? Oh, what is it? Okay, this is it. It's just for some reason gigantic. Uh. Where's this picture? Oh, because I, I zoomed it in on the, um, oh my gosh, sorry. Can I please just make this a lot smaller? Look at my camera is all messed up there, which I actually know how that happened, but. All right, so I'm making a 1930s inspired look. I'm using a, the, the beach pajamas is a classic 1930s thing. And so um, I put the sketch really quickly together. I used the butterfly blouse 
as kind of a starting point for the um, pattern. And then um, I'm using the Winslow culottes for, let me just adjust everything in front of you guys, <laughs> uh, for the, um, I have so many layers here, sorry. There we go, oh, I didn't grab it. I, this, it's so fussy to grab what you wanna grab. There we go. I got these shoes, they're brand new, but they are nef definitely 40s inspired. And uh, this is this is it. I'm making these really full Winslow culottes. Yes, beach pajamas, yeah. It was a thing. It was a thing. If you look up 30s beach pajamas, um, and there are actually de de dedicated patterns to it, like by Folkwear Patterns and uh, Decades of Style. They both have really nice ones. So I decided to take the Butterfly Blouse by Decades of Style and the Myrna dress by Colette and merge them. And that's how I got my blouse, which doesn't actually look like this. Um, I, don't, I don't have a picture of it there, but I have it. You're gonna see the whole reveal after the wedding. I'm learning how to put lipstick on. How, when did lipstick get hard? When did lipstick get hard? I have never been a makeup wearer until the last few years. Uh, so I'm learning lots of things. And this is the comb I've been telling you about. So this is actually from the 30s. It's the only actual vintage thing I have purchased and I got it from eBay. But do you see this little scoop in the comb? It's making it really hard to put it in my hair and not look like, see, it, it juts out from my head. So if this was my bun, it sticks out. It's really bizarre. Pulados? Pulados. What are pulados? Is that a, I don't know what that is. Are you thinking of, um, well, now that I've seen that word, I can't think of the word I'm thinking of. So anyway, I've tried it a bunch of times, a bunch of ways, and uh, someone in my community reached out kindly and gave me some tips. So I have a strategy. Well, let's hope I pull it off because I am literally not the most adept when it comes to hair and makeup. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I thought my daughter was going to be here to help. Nope. Leaving town. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it is. Pant Are you thinking of, um, palazzo pants? Palazzo pants? K uh, kind of like palazzo pants. Yeah. But beach pajamas are traditionally one piece of clothing. I did not want a jumpsuit. I wanted two separates. I want this to be wearable after the wedding. I will 100% wear this blouse, and when I'm done with these, I will probably shorten them to like somewhere between these two lengths. So, yeah. Hi, Donna. How's it going? So, yeah. I feel like I'm stalling because I literally think we could sew these right now, just the whole thing, and if I, if I might do that. I don't have anything planned for the rest of the day. I should be recording more video and uploading it, but I don't know why, but my, um, I have so many, I don't know, my mojo's kind of gone with that. I want to do it, but I've, I'm one of those people that if I have other things I have to focus on, I can't focus on other things, like certain things. And um, I have so many other things in the air with like the guild that it's, it's, not, it's not allowing me to do YouTube much. <laughs> More live, I'll probably do more live streams, more spontaneous ones like I did last week though. All right, so I drafted a, a, a slash pocket on the hip. I have my label picked out. I picked the um, finished just in time label, but honestly, I'm finishing these tomorrow. So I know that was like, I, I could have finished them Saturday. That would be my traditional day to sew. But um, yeah, it's the Winslow Culottes by Helen's Closet. So that's what I'm making today. Winslow Culottes, Helen's Closet, comes in lots of sizes. They're very, very full. Um, there are four lengths. Sorry, it's a little bright for, the paper's a little bright for the camera. I'm making this really long one, like this. Yeah, they're pleated, invisible center back zip. So we get to use the invisible zipper foot. <laughs> I'm all about that thing. So yeah, all right. So 
So our first step is pleating things, and uh, these. I hope you're going to be able to see what I'm doing, just because the print is kind of busy and the pieces are gigantic. So we're going to put the pocket aside, and we're just going to do our pleats. And I don't. I wanted to know if the pleats were actually sewn together, because I don't think they are. I think you're just folding them and sewing across the top. I'm actually think I'm going to base the pleat in place three quarters of an inch from the top. Hmm. I think I'm actually going to sew the pleat down a little bit, just a little bit, just past the waistband. All right, and we need to figure out the right and wrong side. So this is the right side. Yeah. Hey, Sarah, how's it going? So this is the crinkle cotton that Blackbird Fabrics was selling. And I bought it because I was like, well, I have to have that This because this is my, I love green. I love two color prints as well. This is, a, it's a little greener than what's showing on the camera. Um, and um, when I got it in the mail, I was like, you know, I think that could work. I was looking at some really crazy fabrics for this whole beach pajama look. I'm so glad this came in the mail because I am doing something a little more manageable, right? Hi, Aisha, how's it going? We have another Aisha in the chat sometimes. Hey, hey, hey. Elastic waist, no pleats. Yeah, the palazzo pants, you could totally do that. This is gonna give me a little bit smoother of a finish on the waistband. And with my tummy lately, I love that. We've done some elastic back pants lately though. Quite a few of them actually. All right, my comb is kind of in the way. I'm gonna put it over there. So um, this is in the directions. I'm just gonna sew straight down my pleat. So I have my notch right here. So I'm putting this right sides together. I'm gonna try and make sure my pleat is uh, parallel with the stitching. And I'm just gonna secure it. I don't know, maybe I'll regret this. I don't think so though. Let's see. I feel like I will just do it for you know, a couple inches or so. <laughs> Let's see what we did here. We did it for almost three inches, so we'll be consistent. And then we're gonna open it up, center it, and stitch it along the waist. They're gigantic pleats. Ironically, I today am wearing culottes. I'm making, I weren't, uh, I'm wearing the Tanya culottes by Megan Nilsson Patterns, and they too have pleats like this on them. And they too are gigantic. I'm trying to find one. Oh, they're at the center, but they're on a seam. Not like this. So I think that will make the pleat fall a little bit nicer for longer. You know, we'll see. I will experiment so you do not have to. That is my job here. That's the job I would like. Hi, Elena. Yeah, no worries. Well, thanks for coming. Loved your leather satchel you made. What an incredible piece. You're gonna have that for forever. It's incredible. Loved it. All right, to about right there. We only have four of these. So we're gonna do them right. Well, we're not actually, we're already uh, <laughs> off script, aren't we? Oh, I can't imagine, yeah. I don't know if you, you got a lot of comments on that post and I think a couple people had questions like, did you pre-drill the holes? I imagine you had to, right? Okay, when you're doing stuff like this, if even if you're not pre-sewing it, make sure, like this one, this pleat isn't shaped. You can see, see how it falls short right here? Maybe you can't see that. So I'm gonna hold this. Yeah, you pre-punched, exactly. All right, so do you see how the pleat isn't meeting 
the waist right there. Can you see that? Let's see, this side's more visible, I think. So hopefully when you are doing stuff like this, it does meet the waist or the raw edge that you're lining it up to. Um, make sure that you do because get it lined up for a little bit and then, you know, if it's not meeting, maybe center the amount it's off on both sides there. This way you'll get a pleat that doesn't do that cockeyed kind of thing when it's hanging because most of them will, especially if you aren't sewing it like I did closed, so. Oh yeah, Elena, I bet. It's all about the tools with leather making, isn't it? Is this one um, also right sides together? I really can't tell. This one looks like the outside. I'm so paranoid about this fabric, you know? And this is definitely the right side. Why is this one harder to tell? Let me pull over on this side. Oh, that's the raw. Okay, so this is the right side. That one's right side down right now. I'm just saying that out loud so I remember. The next step after the pleat here is we're gonna put the pocket on. And then the sides, the waistband, the zipper, finish the waistband hems. It's seven steps. <laughs> Oops. Let's make sure we got the same. We're gonna be consistent, something I'm not usually. There we go, there's one. If I regret these, I can always unpick them up to the waist, do my best to pull the threads to the back. So that's my backup plan. There's a notch, I'm centering the notch on that seam there. And again, I'm gonna kind of, I like to give it a little tug, make sure it's all nice and lined up along that raw edge there. All right, this is face down. That's what I said, right? Okay, yeah, 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 I can tell, I can tell. Okay. What are you all working on? Or are you supposed to be at work right now? <laughs> all the hook people playing hooky. I'm, I'm not against it. I would be doing the same thing. Last pleat. Where's that little notch? There it is. So I let my bias dress hang for a little bit and then I tried it on. The bodice got long, a little long, and I think it was a little long to begin with. So I actually took it apart. I want to get it right. So I took it apart and I'm only trimming it in the back. You played hooky this afternoon just so. Ooh, you say, ooh, look at all of you. Hi, Danny. How's it going? Hi, Rachel. <clears throat> You're going to cut out fabric tape with live pans. Feel like I've been working on that project forever. Just no time. Yeah. Daring to a pincy, pincy dress. Ponce? What is that one? Oh, you have to order more fabric. That's a bummer. <laughs> You're crocheting a black and silver metallic bedspread. Wow. That's a bold statement. Metallic as in is it metal? Because, I mean, you can, you know, crochet with metal yarn. That sounds heavy. Your couple basic tees. Ooh, that's always a good, a good thing to have. All right, so this is the uh, back and the back. What am, this is not the back. This is, was this the back? Why did I lose one of my notches already? I could have. I can also, no, that's a front. I can see that there's a hand pocket opening. This is a back. Oh, here it is. Wait, 
these are bags right here. All right, let's do our pockets. Yarn, like chain mail. Yeah, right. This army medic bag by customized. Oh, cool. Nice. All right. That's so funny. I love that you're doing a black and metal bedspread. We're here. I'm trying to find the lightest possible, well, like the most breathable bedspread with still some weight because I like, I like weight on top of me, but it gets so bloody hot here. And um, my idea <laughs> is that I'm going to use linen and I'm going to dye it because I, I just found undyed linen was the most affordable thing for me and I'm going to dye it, but I'm only going to like, well, this is my, this is my grand plan. I want to have like two pieces quilted together, just the raw edge around the perimeter, nothing fancy, but I want it quilted with a, like a polyester thread and then I'm going to dye it and the polyester thread it's, is going to be, you know, undyed. It's not metal. Black and silver metallic. Okay. Yeah, it's not metal. Okay, it's just silver metallic yarn. Got it. You're probably being driven crazy. I'm reading chat. I'm doing a few things. So far, I have some cotton and the burn test is never as easy as yarn. No, it's not. I never do burn tests. <laughs> okay. This is the... Uh... Wait. Oh, that is the right size. This is the right side. Wait a minute. Did I sew this one wrong? Oy. D I could have. Oy, oy, oy. No. This is, I do not have two right side pants. You know, that is not, that is not acceptable. Why does this look darker than this? It is darker. This is the right side. Please tell me this is the back. Cause this looks like I have two right fronts or left fronts. This is the back. Oh my God. Give me a freaking heart attack. Why don't you? These pieces are not easy to tell. That, that one had a little shape at the corner, but maybe it's not as prominent as this one here. All right, she's Louise. Let's do our pocket. I'm sorry, yeah, it just, I'm reading it, reading it quickly. I mean, black and silver metallic bedspread. Metallic is, I guess in my head, I'm picturing the yarns that are, they look metallic and some of them do have a bit of metal in them. I've been a knitter, like I, I'm, I'm very familiar with yarn. It sounds so nazzy. <laughs> All right, I'm not a fan of this fabric, but this is, look, there's a little hole in it. I'm using this for just the lining so that the print didn't show through the, the fabric. And I'm gonna do this Right side is the matte side. That's my plan. All right. Let's see here. Something like that and like that. And I think I was just gonna edge stitch it down, but I think what I'm gonna do, this is my little trick. If I wanna just put this right sides together and clean finish this edge here, what I do is lay it on here flush. This is like a little cheat. Line this all up, which is kind of hard to do. And I'm gonna notch it where I want the two edges to overlap. Oh my God, I had to go so far in there. And we'll do this one down here. 
And now I can put this right sides together, line, stack up that notch there. But let's make sure we don't get off track right here as well. We'll use a little hair marker. I can't even see that. Wow. That's the first time the hair markers ever failed me. We're just going to put a couple pins here. It's just so I make sure I get a nice parallel line. Line up those notches. That one's gigantic, I know. Here, and then we'll pin it here. Pin it here, and then we're going to check how parallel we are to that, and we'll pin it in the middle. Sometimes my stitch length seems really long lately. Take all my pins. And hopefully we're pretty close. There we go. So now we have a nice clean finished edge there. For my pocket facing. I can edge stitch it too. I'm not ironing because the, it takes the crinkle out of the fabric. So it's got to be a little bit more strategic. All right, it's one pocket. Oof, this fabric is disgusting. <laughs> this, not, not the crinkle cotton. The crinkle cotton is really nice. And I can actually iron out the crinkle, so I do have to be careful when I'm ironing it. If I have to press it at all, It's so weird to sew on a Wednesday. It's going to throw my whole week off. Oops. I know I'll probably uh, be confused and think tomorrow is um, Friday. Because I usually sew part one on a Thursday. Where's my notch down here? Right there. So I've been planning June's calendar and um, I'm going to show how to draft a camp collar use, or a camp shirt using a button down shirt because we're having a sew along in the guild. Anyone's welcome. And the sew along is for a camp shirt. You have all summer to do it. Yeah, you definitely can iron out buttons. Up, but the bubble gauze as well but um the thing is you know as long as you're not painting something too constructed you know something a little bit loose lighter flowy less seams unless it's kind of looser um you won't have to really worry about it so much and you can iron the seam allowances if that helps you just make sure you don't stretch anything out you know all right one goes here and this one goes there and I'm always doing the wrong side of the fabric to the inside of pants even when I'm doing a print so sometimes I have to be really methodical so I don't get turned around like that and I don't think I gave it that much seam allowance so let's be careful here the Winslow's have inseam pockets. <clears throat> I'm doing this kind because they're flatter 
and, I, and also I can anchor them at the waistband. Oh, this fabric is terrible. Which is nice because then I can have the pocket always to the front of my pants. It'll make it a little less bulky too. I'm gonna understitch it. I thought my needle just came undone. Oh, I um, I tried out my new presser foot. I never, I have never bought a presser foot for my Bernina, my home machine, but I did recently. Shoot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah okay. And the two I got, one I needed was a, a blind, uh, no, a, a pin tuck foot. I can't grab the thread. Oh my God, this, this, this fabric is kind of a nightmare. I'm having regrets using it, but it's really all I had for lining. All right. The other foot I got though was the kind that sews, it holds a button so you can sew a button to the garment. And it also, I, why am I having so much trouble getting the seam allowance to go, can you please, because I'm not ironing it, that's why, can you please stay over there? I'm trying to keep these like untangled, but I'm just gonna have to separate them. Um, <clears throat> so it holds the, foot, the little button there while you sew it on, but it also has a post so that if you like to weave the shank of your threads of your button, it will leave a, you know, thread like space loop between the button and the thread. And you can raise and lower the little post to hold up the threads and then it zigzags over it holding up the threads. So you can, you can have the shank or not have the shank and you could probably get away with not weaving them as well because I just did a ton of them and I was like, okay, I'm definitely gonna weave them because I, like, I like doing it. But I thought that was kind of cool. I'm not, I, I'm not sure about if it really saves me time you know, or to do that. Hand sewing a button on is as much work as machine sewing a button on. It's like the one thing that machine sewing has not improved upon. Mainly because you need to like tie off the threads and uh, if you're weaving the shank, it's just so fussy, you know? I'm doing a French seam here, but I can tell it's a little uneven, so that's why I did a big seam allowance right here. I'm gonna trim it down. I still haven't decided what I'm doing as my seam finish on these pants. I have a lot of extra binding, but binding I think would just make them too bulky. This one we will iron. All right, let's do our other one and we can iron. But I'm pretty pleased with how it goes. I'll have to show you guys sometime because it, it was pretty nice that it holds the button or the holds those threads up and creates that kind of space to do the post or the shank, you know? <laughs> Will you sue? <laughs> no, Rachel. I got it from Ken's Sewing Center. It was the cheapest place I found. Um, my only complaint is that it's one of those places where they say they have a few in stock and they actually don't. So it didn't ship for like five days. And I was like, and they created, this is a pet peeve of mine after being a business owner and shipping thousands and thousands of packages. One thing I hate is when businesses take your order and then the next day they create a shipping label, but then that doesn't ship. We know. I don't know why they don't think we know. We can tell the package hasn't moved, right? Because UPS is onto that stuff. And so they have made it so that it's a pre-shipment label, right? Package is still sitting at the place you bought it. And that's what they did. And that, that kind of drives me crazy when people do that. They do that because you get like um, <clears throat> scores from websites and things that you're, that host you. Why is this so far up? Jeez, you know and and like mine shopify could they wouldn't pen, penalize me but they would probably say oh you ship packages really fast or something that doesn't that that like metric doesn't really show publicly i don't know why anyone really would try and bend that because it's it's nothing it's like literally nothing but on some platforms like say etsy 
you know. But Ken's Sewing Center, they're not on Etsy. This didn't line up at the top here, and it's probably because this little edge has gotten a little stretched out. Look at that. It's a little stretched out down here, so we're just, I'm trying to correct it a little bit. I'd rather be off right there than at the top, because then I'm not gonna lose pocket depth, and my pockets won't feel different from one another. If I push it over here, I won't lose the depth. All right, so. I heard that Google search gives priority to 10 or more items, so people fetch to priority to 10 or more items. What does that mean? Hi, Cynthia. They give priority to 10 or more items. I don't know how Google would know your shipping track record. Oh, I see what they have in stock. Well, this place said they had three. They have three in stock of everything. <laughs> That's suspicious <laughs> already. They shipped the package, but I did check in at one point because I was like, what's going on here? If, if this is happening and you're going to hold on to this for like weeks and weeks, I'll be kind of mad, you know. Yeah, that, that does make sense, Cynthia. They didn't come up as like a first result. And I'm fine with it. Like, like five, if you're gonna hold my order for five days, I'm totally fine with that. Like, that's no big deal. I just get a little nervous, especially with sewing centers. Um, I've been dealing with sewing centers for decades now. And I don't put up with their shenanigans, the whole like, you know, oh, we'll have your serger back to you in t two weeks. And they don't. Mm -mm. No, I'm not okay with that. Or they're like, um, what do they say? Oh, yeah, bring bring your machine in and we should get to it within a couple weeks. And it's, they don't. <laughs> so, yeah. And I think of places like that. You know, they're like, they, I know, they, they're struggling financially but at the same time just be honest about it I don't know okay that's ready to finish pockets are almost done and then we're going to start constructing these I'm pretty sure I'm going to use the pockets as my purse for this wedding All right, let's just iron a tiny bit right here. Just a little bit. Get this all nice and lined up. Look at how much narrower it is. Now that's all pleated up. There we go. I was like, wait, why don't I have an opening? It looks good. Probably should have put a fold line over here. All right, this fabric smells vintage. <laughs> Is that keeping in spirit with the 30s theme? It's probably from the 60s. <laughs> I don't know though. It could be from the 80s. I don't really know. Mm -mm -mm. How many of you have made the Winslow culottes? I feel like this is a really popular pattern. Culottes are never on my radar, and here I am wearing some, and I really love them. So, kind of looking forward to having these after the wedding. Oh, this fabric is so fussy, though. God, this lining fabric. Just trying to find its place there. I'm doubtful that's it. All right. Hi, Libby. 
You blame Lee? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I do not take that excuse. <laughs> Hi, Eliza, how's it going? Drives me crazy when people generate label when the, yep. Yep, exactly. You, yeah, I figured you had Elena. All right, let's uh, close this bottom seam here. You don't, okay, I, I like this shoe question, Rachel, because um, I, ha I feel like I am now like officially stuck in my ways with certain things and it's really not like because I'm stubborn about it. It's more that I've forgotten to reevaluate aspects of my uh, wardrobe and shoes are definitely one of them. I've been a staunch Dansko clog wear for so long and they are not the way they used to be. Like they are not like as nice as they used to be. Um, and they've also contributed to some lower back issues for me, not because of them, but because of me. I, I have a pretty serious, uh, Achilles tendon issue. So, um, but I felt like they went with everything, right? And so now, like today I was like, what do I wear with my culottes? And and other dresses, I, I just, I want to wear sandals, it's hot, but I don't know, like wearing things now that are not with a little, it's not even that I like the heel, it's just the proportion of it. Oh my God, the sewing on this pocket is just so bad. Oh man, okay. So I got a gift certificate for my birthday to, because I, I asked, my mom asked, like, what do you want? I said, I want... I want a gift certificate to the store. And she said, sure, and it's a shoe store. She was like, okay. Like, she was excited about that. Like, it was very easy, right? And um, trying to get my pocket here to lay on here. I'm going to, I think I'm going to check. Well, maybe I'm okay. But now I'm a little nervous about going there and finding something that I like. Yeah, Karen, exactly. Do you have a favorite brand? Elena, I definitely did that too, but, um, well, I had docs, but I, I don't know. I just, that's just too hot here. I love that look, honestly. <laughs> it's just too hot here. They're too heavy. This pleat is just hey, huge. Let's just straighten some stuff out because I'm doubting. I'm doubting the pleat. Look at how wide this is. <laughs> it's so huge. It's so narrow at the top. I hope that fits me. It does not look like it's going to fit me. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm, tr I'm just making sure that I have this little space here correct. That's all. And it's a little, the fabric underneath is just freaking fussy. That's just all there is to it. I kind of like these, these 1930s shoes I got. I might get more of those. Usually by Clark's. We have those. Hi, Beverly. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's awesome, Beverly. Um, my big, uh, okay, here is my tip for that one. I think the dart is really high on that. So if you tend to have darts run high anyway, I would compare it to something else and lower it because I think it looks high on everybody. And it's definitely high on me. Um, and then the other thing I found with that one is... There is some, there's an angle here. What is it? Is it that it pokes out? Like, does it do this or does it, or is it here? I can't remember. Um, but gosh, the finishing on, the way that she has you finish it is really nice. 
I, I and I love like every time I see the top, I think it's so cute. I have a top, but I use vintage fabric, and all the polka dots have scratched off like in weird spots, like here in my belly. <laughs> so uh, I got to make another one because every time I look at the hashtag for the top, it's really cute. Oh, oh, I know the other thing I was gonna say, Beverly. It doesn't have pockets, and I put inseam pockets on mine, and they're too low. They're right on my hips. They bug me. So if you put pockets in, that dress isn't very full. That's why I feel like it's kind of flattering. It's very like, it's just very cool and breezy. Um, be careful about the pocket placement. Maybe yours will be looser on you than it is mine is on me. Um, Burke Troll shoes. <laughs> Yeah, same, same, Sarah. I have to wear orthotics that are not very user-friendly. What are you asking about the... Did someone ask about the a great pressing tool? Oh, for the bubble the fabric? Oh, that's cool. Okay. I've secured this one. Let's secure the side seam here. I'm trying to go slow because otherwise I'm gonna finish all these today. I mean, I guess that's okay. I have some things I would like to work on. I've been fit fitting my sloper again. <clears throat> and I have been fixing the bias cut dress. So I'd love to, I'm, and I'm trying to do that in my free time. So it'd be fun to keep finishing those. This front does not look wide enough. I just don't believe this front is wide enough for me. I mean, maybe. I'm a little nervous about that. Maybe the back is wide? I hope. No, I did not do a muslin, but I'm, I'm not worried about it because it's a pretty loose pant. So, God, the regrets with this, this pocket lining fabric. It is so hard to get to lay in any semblance of flatness. I should have used muslin. That that would have been a better choice. You know, it's kind of bad when muslin's a, a good choice, but muslin muslin's a great fabric. It's very dependable if you have washed muslin around. It's just kind of wrinkly, some of the lower quality ones. And right now I kind of have a mishmash of muslins. Mishmash of muslins. I took out the stitching for that because I just felt like it wasn't laying as flat as I wanted it to. So I'm just kind of kind of babying this whole thing. Hi Aisha, how's it going? Yeah, cool Beverly. Well, maybe that one will give you some um, guidance on like how this one will fit. Hi Sydney. How are you? Are you having a better week? <laughs> Let's do the center front seam. I think I'm going to do French seams on this. Gosh, I'm just getting lost in the sauce here. All right, we're gonna do some French seams. I have so much binding though. <laughs> what was I thinking? Oh, I, I think the, um, I was, I think I bound the side seam of the blouse where the invisible zipper gets sewn in. 
as my like finish, or maybe I did a Hong Kong finish. I think that's what I did, right? But I'm not sure I wanna do that on the center back, but we'll, we'll see. We might. It's kind of a fun idea. I don't think that would add too much bulk, you know? That's what I'm wondering, Karen. It was exactly what I was thinking and hoping. <laughs> it might. The backs do look pretty big, but you know, you're not sewing, are you? You know, you're not, I knew it. Oh, you may have run out of a bobbin. I knew it was getting low. Oh yeah, you did. Gosh, right at the end of that seam. That was lucky. Yeah, look at that. This is where I ended that seam, and that's where the bobbin ran out. Pretty good. Okay. Not pressing the seam is it's a little a little harder. It's a it's a nice weight that I can actually kind of pull on it. You know, like what I do is I push it over my finger like this, get it right on that edge. And then my hand is underneath <clears throat> and I'm pulling on the pant like this, like that. And what that does is it tightens up that underside. All sewing is fabric handling, right? You could be a person that doesn't know like all the ways things are constructed very well and still get a really amazing finished garment because you're fabric handling, you know? They will now. <laughs> I mean, I guess, but that is pretty forward, you know? I think they're high-waisted too. It does? Okay. That's good. Let's hope so. It's not in this picture. This is the look of um, obvious disappointment if it doesn't fit. This is too narrow. This is not going to fit me. I must have done this pleat wrong. What? Maybe I did this pleat wrong. Look at how narrow that is. There's no way. I need to read the directions here. I must have done this pleat wrong. I mean, there's a standard way to mark for a pleat. No, I did that correctly. <laughs> I'm scared. Let's put this on my dress form. I'm too nervous. I don't have like the back of fabric I would need. It's non-existent. Okay. Well, now it's a two-part stream. <laughs> All right, where's my front? <laughs> I've got my, I'm kind of getting ticked off. Okay, that's, that's not as bad as I thought but it's, it's definitely forward. Okay. There's no way that would fit across me. Is there? Oh my gosh, it almost does. I think that I think I'm scared. What do you mean look at the backs? I am looking at the backs. So, I mean, it's not fitting on my dress form. It's almost fitting. See that? I think I need to take out some of the pleat I'm so scared, you know. 
Hmm. It's got the longest freaking rise. <laughs> you know? Long rise. But that's a three inch gap. There are pleats in the back. Does the side seam on the back wrap around towards the front? Well, that's what I'm checking right now, but no. We're not, not yet. It's not too far off though. I, no, uh, the only, um, let's check the waistband. Where's the waistband? Here's the waistband. Yeah, look at that. It's just, there's no way. <laughs> Oops. Okay. I, it'll be fine, but I'm just ticked off. There's no way this would fit me. Like, it's way, way off. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> here's my fabric. Thank goodness, right? So I could, um, yeah, it'll totally be fine. It seems big to you. Oh, the gap. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the gap is big. <laughs> How did this happen? I, maybe the waist is just, yeah, I think I just, just could have graded out for the waist a bit. Oh well. I don't remember what size I cut. So let's figure out. How much should we let out here? Because the hips are going to be fine. Um, I'm trying to decide like where I think that this is going to hit me. So I'm just gonna go off camera right real quick. I'm gonna hold this up to me to see. <clears throat> they were too big in the waist, Elena. Oh, I, I have doubts that that is gonna be the case here. But I'm gonna hold this up to me right now and see like where I think this, yeah, these are pretty high-waisted. They're really high-waisted, right, Elena? All right, so I'm assuming that these are gonna hit me where my current ones do. So let's make a waistband. I don't have my um, pattern table set up for the camera. We can turn this light on at least a little bit. But let's go cut a new waistband. Woo woo. I still have the belt. Maybe I should use the belt for the waistband. Okay. Come on, fabric. <laughs> Don't fail me now. <laughs> All right, so if I were to, let me pin up my shirt here real quick. We're just gonna make these fit the waistband. I need a lot. <laughs> okay, so. I need like a good six inches. Sorry, I can't see chat either. So maybe I will just make my waistband two pieces to save some fabric. Maybe, I don't know. I could get it right down the middle here. But do I do that to my fabric? I don't know. I think I'm gonna um, cut two pieces. We'll have a side seam. Oh, we need a, we actually need a center back. 
So maybe I will do this one piece, because otherwise I need a front and I need two backs. This is e equidistant to the front and the back, which is interesting too. Let me turn my computer around just in case you guys are yelling at me. You end up wearing them above your tummy. Yeah. I'm wearing Tanya's exactly. I mean, my waist has definitely been growing lately. I don't think um, it was. I was that far off. It's been a while since I've been really far off on my, you know. I need a little bit more than that. So let's make a, a front waistband and two back waistbands. Yeah. Let's do that. That'll be pretty easy to do. I can even use this piece for one of them. Yeah, I think I was just was probably figuring out everything really quickly and didn't realize I needed to grade between the waist and the hip. Okay. I'm, because I'm on camera, I'm gonna do my math. too scared. My Beatrice, you're right, Sydney. That is a very good point. All right, so I'm going to need one. Okay, so 14, 7. Okay. All right, we got this. We got this. We're gonna get our two backs out of this piece right here. Oh, please be enough. Just, I'm double checking my math. Oh, oh I'm so glad I just double checked my math. Okay. Okay, okay. Drama of a different sort today. There's my backs. And now I need, let me see, can I get a front out of any of this? No. Get a front right here. I didn't end up cutting something to stabilize my my waistband, and I think I should. I'm using the old pattern for the width. That's so interesting, Elena. That is not a straight line right there. Look at that. My goodness. My goodness. What do I want to use for my stabilizer? 
don't think I want to iron anything on, you know. Professional pattern drafter gets foiled by a rectangle. My gosh, there we go. Okay, front, back. The big pleats are huge. Well, yeah, I can, but I need a new waistband. I can't just let out the pleats. It won't fit without a new waistband. Um, but I need to decide on a, I need a sew-in interfacing. I'm, I think I need a sew-in interfacing, unless I use self. And I don't really want to use self. What do I have that's washed though? Not a whole lot right now, as far as solids go. Hmm. I know I have some washed muslin, but will it be obvious? Let's see. A gusset, oh God, no. Gusset, people are really into gussets. Gussets are so problematic and they're so hard to get correct. They really add, and they add fabric in a really weird way. So I, I steer clear of gussets. <clears throat> People are kind of into them, but I find them a little bit tricky. Oh, here we go. This will work. This will work. This is washed. It's white though. It's my only problem. So it's going to make the waistband look like a shining beacon. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm not immune to those problems at all. I need a bunch of this. I'm gonna lay all these on here. That should be bigger, but okay, fine. It's not, not much. That back waist better be correct. I'll tell you what. It should be an inch bigger than the front. <laughs> I'm gonna make it an inch bigger right now and um, make sure I did this math correctly here. These right here should be. Yeah, those are perfect. Okay. And then this right here. Yeah. Fine. This is a little bit off, I can tell. It's not that straight, but that'll be okay. All right, so one of these is for the front. Two of these are for the back. And I do think I'm gonna use the whole width on the waistband. The um, this fabric is super lightweight. OK, 
Okay. Wait, what? Did you cut it completely? Yes. No, I'm cutting a whole new waistband. I What I'm doing is though, um, I'm making a front waistband and two back waistbands because there's a center back zipper, you know? And I'm doing that just because of my fabric, like how much fabric I have. I didn't want to cut down the middle of the, and I don't even think it would have been long enough. Okay, here we go. We're ready, you guys. Can you believe it? <laughs> Is anyone going to see the waistband? No, I'm not worried about the waistband. What are you guys worried about? <laughs> I'm like, what are you guys worried about? Do I need anything over here? This is all I need, right? Okay, so now we just need to adjust our pleat. You know, what I want is, you know how like you have those, um, those counters on the wall? There has not been a workplace injury for 45 days, you know, and the days numbers change. What I want is we, it has been zero days zero live streams that we have not ripped out the very first thing I have sewn. It is always the very first thing I sew. It is a freaking jinx. <laughs> oh, I guess I could have done that, Elena. You're right. All right, so um, we just need to take out a little bit of stitching. <laughs> I totally jinx myself saying it's only seven steps. I mean, it is. Yeah, it's nuts. It's, it's so crazy. And sometimes, sometimes I worry when the very first thing we're sewing is something a little bit like diving into the deep end. I'm like, oh God, I don't want to rip this out. You know, who does, right? But it, it's, it's kind of amazing. All right, so there, and then we'll take out all of this. Is it, is it hilarious? I don't know. I've noticed it. I don't know if you guys have noticed it, but I have. <laughs> it's like, Let's start with the most basic step. We're gonna get you set up for your project. Nothing can go wrong with this. I will find a way to have to remove it. Okay. We have our pleat out, get the pocket out of the way. Now, now. What we need is this pocket here to be a little bit secured so we can see where our waist ends over here. And we kind of are still, I didn't give myself really a guide. I know about how much I want it exposed over there. And I usually, my typical when I draft a slash pocket like this is I make this distance one and a half inches. That's usually my, my default. It's kind of nice when you are consistent with some of your drafting things and then that way you know like, why well, I didn't give myself a notch, what would it have been? So, <laughs> honest. <laughs> no, I don't, I think I distract myself. I don't, I, I know I didn't sew the pleat incorrectly. I mean, that's not, that's not what's at stake here. That's the thing is like, it's usually not something I've done incorrectly it's something else that happens that it impacts whatever we sewed first it's just it's just my lot in life all right so i'm keeping this pleat out of the way 
while I just tack this so I have my waist width right there. All right, so now our pleat is loose right here. The thing is I stitched the dumb pleat, you know. That's what I did wrong. <laughs> All right, how much do we, I knew, I told you guys, I was like, this looks so tiny for me. We need um, buckets. <laughs> we need buckets. Okay, let's put a little center notch here. And we'll put a center notch on this side. Make sure it's nice and flat when you fold it. Otherwise, you're, uh, you'll get a torque. Okay, so now, this is what we'll do. We're gonna flip this over like this to us. We're not remathing anything, but, but anyway, I think by the way, I'm just going to be very methodical about this. Here's my waistband. <clears throat> we need buckets. Will I have a pleat left? I'm getting ticked off right now. <laughs> Will I have a pleat left? I ask you. I think that, um, you know, I picked this based on my hip size and I really shouldn't have. I should have picked this based on my waist size. There's also a really big difference between the waist and the hip. So maybe that's also where I just kind of assumed incorrectly. Imagine that. I was so worried about fabric usage. I probably spent two seconds picking my size. You know? <sighs> Buckets. <laughs> Lost. That's a unit of measure. Yeah, that's not, there's nothing wrong with that, Elena. Sometimes I don't even stitch the dart. I just leave it as like a pleat, like a loose, you know? It's always part of the process, right, Aisha? I mean, sometimes, I just hate that we have to go all the way back to square one. Okay, there's a little bit of stitching right here. <sighs> okay. So, we have some pleat. We're getting, we're gonna get some pleat. <laughs> so let's do this. We'll. We'll put this like this. Since we're live on camera, we're making this very methodical. I'm really good at math. Terrible at it in front of people. All right. Here is my center pleat here. So then when I'm gonna figure out my pleat, what I'm gonna do is, where's my center? There's a notch here, here, here. Here's my center right here. I'm gonna fold this like this, and now I'm just gonna choke up on the fabric until I meet the waist. Let me get all this out of the way, like this, and then it'll lay flatter. So we wanna keep it centered, right, in the same spot. So we're just gonna choke this up, make sure we get this nice and flat, right? We don't wanna get a bubble. Keep it centered, and then there we go. There's my new pleat. There's the old line. So the pleat got two inches in volume smaller, just like that. Let's try that. Okay, and then where's my little ruler? I am still being methodical with my length. All right, so that's perfect. See that? So now we can straddle this. Do I need seam allowance on the waistband for the closure? Uh, uh, I do at the center back. Yeah, there is some. 
Yeah, that's that actually, um, Aisha Walsh. That sounds that seems kind of familiar to me too. Like as soon as I looked at the size just now, I was like, oh yeah. The waist closure is just an invisible zipper, though, Andrea. I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure. Did I read it wrong? Ah, <laughs> let me make sure I'm not throwing Ellen's closet in, under the bus here. Yeah, 10, 10 inches difference. When you go from the 12 up, it's strange that it's a smaller difference, but not by much. It's a nine inch difference on the smaller sizes. So, all right, let's uh, fix my other pleat. We're almost back on track, you guys. Good thing we checked. This is probably one of my, um, oh, you did? I'm wearing that top right now, Aisha. Um, I made a, my first, I know exactly what mistake you made. Let me guess, let me guess. Did you for either forget to leave the little opening at the end of the neckband? Something like that, was it in that area? Because I actually read that through and I, and I did it, but I, I um, left all of those edges open, <laughs> so I took it too far. <laughs> okay, so here's our other side, right? It's better just to do this upside down to me like this, like this. Here we go. Here's our waist side seam right here, right? Oh, you so yeah, exactly. Yeah, you gotta, you, that one is definitely got a really tricky neck finish the way she does it. Not tricky as in hard, just like, oh, that's out of order. All right, so here's my center. Is this my center? Wait, um, one notch, one notch, one notch. Okay, here's my center and we're gonna choke up again. We know it's two inches difference, but we are just being literal right now. So yeah, one of my things I usually tell people is like when you, if you are at all expecting something is up, just check. Like I am the first person to be like, it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine. Or I just, it's almost like you know consciously you don't want to look because you don't want to know if something is actually wrong. But the thing is, if you're thinking that, you're just setting yourself up with, for so much more work later. It's just better just to know, you know what I mean? So, ignorance is not blissful when it comes to uh, sewing. You know what I mean, jelly beans? Okay, I'm just making sure. I'm still pre-stitching my pleats, which is not in the instructions, by the way. I think it'll be a nicer, smoother finish along the, the, the front. Okay, we're, we're good now. Let's take off the waistband. And get our front back in order. The pleat is still, you know, it's there. It's a, 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 you know, a mama bear pleat rather than a papa bear pleat. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly, Elena. And, and you know what, anytime you're doing a waistband on something that's loose, you should do that. No, I'm not edge stitching the pleats down. I, in the instructions, you don't sew the seam. So the inverted pleat, I've created the seam down here. You're just supposed to push it together and then sew across the top. My problem with that is that, especially if you have a belly or any kind of curves, it pokes your pleat out constantly. 
right? And this will help it give it a more smooth look. It also defines your pleats, so the pleats are gonna fall straight down from this seam. Whereas if it's up here at this point of, um, what's, my, what's the word I'm looking for? Not tension, but, um, you know, the waist is a, it's a point where it gets narrow and it starts getting fuller directly below the waist. It's gonna poke your pleats out. You might need the volume, but I doubt it. I, I think that these are gonna be full enough. So if you feel like you're gonna need the volume immediately below your waist, maybe not do what I'm doing. I got a little tuck. I'm gonna deal with that later. I'm gonna be unhappy I have to deal with it later, but I will deal with it later. Okay, we're just assembling everything back to where it was, putting my pocket back to the waist, and just in general getting ready for a waistband. And then we haven't sewn the backs together, but we did do the pleats. I'm just gonna get rid of this tuck right now. Be nice to my future self. The crinkle cotton is gonna do that occasionally because it's like, um, it's like pleats that didn't happen. Oh, welcome Dorothy. Thanks for welcoming a new subscriber, Elin. I appreciate it. <laughs> I have alerts, but I don't get the sound anymore. So if I'm looking down, I don't see it. I don't know if they're watching live. All right, here we go. Our front is back on track. Let's sort out our backs, which are here on the dress form still. There was a time when this back would have, that would have fit me. It is not now. All right, oops, sorry, machine. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> quite a bit. All right, take out this pleat here. And then we're gonna do the center back rise. No, we're not gonna do the center back rise. What am I gonna do with that? We're gonna do the side seams. And then we'll be left really with just the zipper and the waistband. So let's see how we're doing at that point. And if I don't like these pleats being stitched down, I'll just unpick them after it's sewn, you know? All right. They're coming to get, get me, I think. It's the seam ripper police. All right, pull out this pleat. This, this crinkle cotton is so lightweight. Elena, I don't know if you can hear me, but what kind of fabric did you make your Winslows out of? I think Rayan would be really great, or like viscous linen noil, or Brussels washer linen. Any of those like linen combos, um, especially any kind of rayon or viscous. Give it like some weight. You'd get that really swingy thing going. I think that'd be cool. I think this fabric would be a little lightweight for these. It'll be fine because they're so long, but I do think that it's a little lightweight for this design. 
All right, so again, if we just want to plead it to something, you want to fix it at the beginning and end. This only has one plead, so it's pretty easy. Just put it lined up. And then we're going to find the center of the pleat. One, two, three, here it is right here. And then we're just going to choke up until we get to the waist. Which is really not much. Why does that not look that much different? It's only a half inch different on the back. Kind of makes sense, I guess. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Viscous lino. Oh, oh, that's a great cautionary tale. I like that. I mean, I don't like that that's happening, you know? All right. It starts at a normal length. <laughs> By the end of the day, you're stepping on your pants. <laughs> I mean, I guess if they're not as the full length, then you're not stepping on them, but. It's interesting that when you, wa when you wash it, it goes back. Oh, a silk crepe would be nice. That would be really nice. We have one and we have the other here. Because I feel like there's, then there's really no way to, um, oh, I already took out the pleat. Oh, I love that. You did make them full length. Yeah, I'm thinking like, if you could prevent that, you know, if you hung your fabric or something, but if you're saying that it goes back to normal and then you have to deal with it every time, then you probably can't really fix that. The glebes are, aren't that full though, are they? They're just like wide leg pants. And what did you say you have? A linen rayon blend? Hmm. I'm really surprised the, the viscous linen oil is doing that. That's kind of crazy. Where's the center? Is this the center? That's the center. We know we only really need it to be a half inch bigger though. So let's take a chance and say it's right here. And let's see. Yeah, it's pretty good. Choke up a tiny bit more. All right, and then let's get this nice and straight. Line up the raw edges along the top. Right here and yeah, that's about right, perfect. I'm stitching down like two and three quarters inches. Yeah, I agree, that fabric is great. All right, let's just stitch down the pleat at the top here. And then uh, do our side seams. All right, we have the back, the back. We have the front. Oh, yours is lightweight. Yeah, I was gonna say that's, the viscous linen oil is really heavy. In a nice way, just like Elena is saying. Let's get rid of some of these marking tools. We're gonna do French seams on the sides. Uh, if you're doing 
side seam pockets, the ones that came with the pattern and you wanna do French seams. I have a dedicated video to that. It's one of my most watched videos. Um, I'll try to remember to link it in the description just in case you want to do the French seam thing and your inseam pockets. I got you. But I did a slash pocket so I'm, I don't have to worry about that. That's a long side seam. <laughs> Putting this wrong sides together. It's just a big old fabric mess. They're about to be pants that I can try on. This fabric, I'm trying to get all the fuzzy from this pocket lining out of the way. The side seam's not lined up perfectly. Sort of ignoring it. Just because it wants to lay in that spot, but try it back on track there. Sometimes your fabric does just doesn't want to line up because of the way it was cut. Maybe it was cut a little crooked. Maybe your grain line. <clears throat> I, I sometimes just let that happen because it wants to do that and it's not going to make a big impact and fit. Let's uh, trim this down a little bit. I think I will iron this French seam because it's so long. I should just use my rotary knife to trim it. See, like right here, you can tell it was cut a little crooked right there, probably because I was so close to the selvage trying to fit my pant on there that I was getting it a little wiggly. The other aspect is this fabric is, is very wrinkly because of the crinkle cotton, and that will sometimes make it inaccurate. All right, let's do the other side. There's so much fabric here. It, I have to say like the idea of cutting these and like losing all that fabric does a, a, like make me a little bit like, you know, but. You, you oh, you love knits, you know, I, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Knits are great for that, right? No ironing necessary. <laughs> are you going to be wearing stilts? Nah. It's like a little heel. I'm not sure what beach pajama shoes would look like. I'm sure it's not a little pump. <laughs> My husband has been working on his outfit <clears throat> and I made a tweed vest last year. He wanted something, well I, I, I was asked by a wardrobe by me to make her vest and I was like, I asked my husband, I was like, are you into having a vest? Like, I'm not sure, you know, I try, I try, I'm very practical. I will take projects on even if I don't need it, but I try and find a home for the garment because, I, and I want it to be something someone's gonna use. So sometimes I, it takes me a bit to find a taker. Isn't that funny? <laughs> and my daughter and my husband are like my my biggest, you know, customers. So I was like, you know, do you need a, would you wear a vest? And he said, you know, I've always wanted to do the tweed, the tweed ride, which is like a bike ride here where everyone gets dressed in tweed and like 20s stuff. 
So it's not too far from the 30s, and so he's gonna wear that vest. Um, and he was gonna wear the newsboy cap with it, but he got a 1930s uh, fedora. And it's got a really wide brim. I didn't realize the 1930s, the fedora had a wider brim. And he's gonna wear suspenders, but he also got the shirt out. I was kind of surprised, I was like, what shirt are you gonna wear? He said, well, I'm gonna wear the one you made me. And he was talking about the one I made him when I was 26 years old. So he said, but because I didn't know he had that shirt till last year. And I was like, you still have the shirt? Because I saw it in the closet. And I was like, what the heck? I thought this thing was gone. I made him a hemp shirt for his birthday when we first started dating. And he loved it. He picked out the buttons for it. And, um, and I asked him last year, I was like, I didn't know you still had that. How come you don't wear it? Is it stained or something or what? He said, oh, it doesn't fit. And I thought it was too small. My husband has not changed size. So I was kind of surprised he said that because I was like, God, I don't remember it being like tight on him. He meant it was too big. Like, and it was. So this week he was like, I want to wear this, but it's a kind of big. Can you make it smaller um, and change out the buttons? And I said, sure. So I brought it in yesterday and I took out the side seam, I took out the armhole. And it was crazy to think that I was cutting on that shirt and cutting the fabric on that shirt and I had not done so since I was half my age. And I just thought, wow, this is kind of cool. I'm not very sentimental, but it made me feel kind of sentimental. I was like, this is awesome. So I cut off a lot of the um, width of that shirt I just laid the pattern pieces of a shirt that he likes on there, trimmed the side seam, the armhole, and everything. The only risk was the fact that the, I, the sleeve that I had drafted for him, because that was a shirt I had drafted myself, and <clears throat> the shirt I had drafted, the sleeve had a really flat cap. So the cap was very flat, you know? And because the shirt I was using as a fit thing had more of a... Um, prominent cap, I lost this length in the sleeve. <laughs> so when you try it on today, it's close. It, the sleeve got a little short, but it's going to be fine for the 30s thing. And he can just roll up his sleeve like maybe once or twice. And I knew it. I was like, oh gosh, to make this narrower using this pattern. I, I, ga I gave his sleeve a little bit of shoulder slope or like I mean, cap, <laughs> it's not, not soldier's loop, but cap. But you know, actually, I'm gonna be really careful and try and, in fact, maybe I'll use my thing you say I never use. I'm just looking at, I forgot to look at the chat really quick. Let me turn it. Tell them about the buttons and buttonholes. Did you mean, um, well, I pulled off all those buttons and they were a lot bigger <laughs> than what he picked out. <laughs> so I had to, well, I got to use my new foot on my machine, which was kind of cool. And I re all the buttons on, but you know, I think that I can leave the buttonholes the same length, even though technically they're a little too big. The, because the placket of the hemp is, is thick, it's not stiff, but it's thick. It's gonna be fine for those uh, buttons. And he'll have a little vest on, so I think it'll be fine. Yeah, they were big buttons. <laughs> they were like half inch buttons on his button up. Even on the collar stand. <laughs> they were cute though. Like I was like, when he picked them out, I was like, really? Because they have a flower on them. Yeah, yeah, I stopped that. I keep fixing my hose over here, but it keeps clipping my thing. Okay. And that, um, oh, and also the pockets on, the chest pockets are huge on it. I can't really, I'm not going to take those off because I feel like that's a risk. I would like to. I think, I, I would like to take them off, but I know the, the holes of my sewing. I don't think I'll ever get rid of those. Oh, my God. 
Why? Why are you getting all hung up? Like you didn't, you never used to get hung up. We're gonna pull you like that, okay. I also embroidered in his pocket. So like when he got it, I didn't tell him, but I had embroidered along the neckband on the inside and on the inside of his pocket, I had embroidered something as well that only he can see. And I think I could make the pocket smaller and that would still, those would not be a problem, but I had forgotten about that when I saw it in there. I was like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, he picked some really small buttons this time. I was like, oh boy. <laughs> but he tried it on today. It's, it's going to be fine. All right, so I'm going to use my salami here so that I can try not to touch any of the rest of the pan. I'm just trying to press the seam a little bit so I can do the other side of the French seam. All right, let's start talking about our center back seam. So we have an invisible zipper. <sighs> I think I'm gonna do a Hong Kong finish <laughs> on the center back on the rise. And this way I'll have finished edges and they're not very bulky. Binding is a little more bulky. and I can kind of stick with the spirit of the French seams. I, I do have dark green serger thread, but I don't know. Here it is. Nothing like the chicken dance, right? See, if I, you're not here for couture sewing, it's very clear. I would have at least changed my thread color for the pocket assembly to match. <laughs> not be the green on the green. How many of you um, change your makes? Like say you made something and now, like right away or maybe a year from now, you decide, you know what, I don't wear this and it's because of blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna make this into a, a shirt instead of a dress now. Do you guys do that very often or, or anything? Oh, I'm gonna make this into shorts instead of pants or um, I'm gonna add this contrast panel here because I need more and I'm gonna do something fun. I don't know. Do you do that a lot? Bye Elena, see you later. All right, Donna, you're staying up to watch. <laughs> you mean sign up? Oh, the VPN, oh, for the Great British. Yeah, we, we can't. <laughs> Wait, what's the skating thing? You've been meaning, now you want to go skating. Bye, Magic Guys. Thanks for stopping in. Yeah, Libby, uh-huh. I'm seriously start thinking about starting a, like a, a weekly show like Fix It Friday. <laughs> well, I know Magic Eyes, but um, not always. I mean, I don't consider changing my makes and is upcycling. I feel like upcycling is more like you're, you're getting a garment that you didn't have before and changing it. But you're right, I mean, you know, whatever. Potato, potato. Oh, you wanna go skating? Oh, the chicken dance. Sorry, yeah. I get that, that song just pops into my head sometimes. 
Yeah, like I, I, I could, I think I could have a show and have content for it every week for doing that. Every week on a Tuesday, I come in, and if I'm slow to get moving on what I need to get doing, I have guaranteed brought in something. Like this week, it was my husband's shirt to redo um, for this wedding, or you know the bias thing that I'm working on. Oh my God, where is that other seam? Here it is, right here. <laughs> I pronounced your name, yeah. Oh man, I am a, I am like, I'm a very experienced live stream watcher. <laughs> I've only been live streaming for five years, but as far as username goes, I am pretty good about figuring them out. Barbara, how's it going? You don't really change things we like to. Yeah, you want to pay a tier for length to my hand? Yeah. I love that idea, Sarah. Yeah, like stuff like that. That's a really good example. You don't generally change your makes later. They usually have outgrown them or get too frustrated if it is off and donate. That is what it's done. Yeah, that's true, Eliza. There are certain ones where I'm like, is it worth it? Or will I find someone who might like it? <clears throat> Hi, Blue Magilla. How's it going? You rarely make something, but fix the fit on a piece. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. You don't change your makes either. We have a few things you could work on. Fix It Friday. <laughs> yeah, right? I just think my only problem with Fix It Friday is that I tend to do all that on Tuesdays, and I couldn't come up with another <laughs> alliteration for Tuesday. Like... um. I did come up with something, but I feel like you wouldn't know what it was for, you know? All right, so we're gonna do a Hong Kong finish, which is kind of like binding. It's kind of like binding, but you don't have to turn under both edges. You just have to turn under. You don't have to turn under either edge. Oh, that's what it was, Tune Up Tuesday. Turn It Round Tuesday. Oh, you guys are so good. I never had a long jersey skirt. I was wearing a top. Yes, Beverly. I just did that. I actually, last week, <clears throat> I took a pair of undershorts that I wear under my dress. Transformation. That must have been it. That was it, Missy. Hi, Missy. How's it going? It was transformation. I didn't think of those other ones. Not tune-up, but transformation Tuesday. Don't you feel like, get turned. <laughs> Don't you feel like that, I might attract a completely different viewer for Transformation Tuesday. I feel like they're gonna be expecting some meditation. It's not Transcendental Tuesday though, right? Um, yeah, I took these this pair of shorts I had made. It was the Do It Better Yourself, like, I don't know, shorts pattern, and oh my goodness, that crotch was just a hot mess in those pants. But I wore them, they were comfortable, they were fine wearing under a dress. <clears throat> and um, I recently got the Dulce shorts by Muna and Brad, and I've been perfecting them for just to make a bunch for wearing. I want to wear them as underwear, but under dresses, you know? I could. I took that pattern and put it on those shorts, those sewn shorts I've been wearing for like two years, and I cut out a pair of Dulcies. <laughs> I took the waistband, cut the waistband off. That was the gusset. I was like, this is great. Okay, we're going to... Yeah, Tune Up Tuesday. I like to turn it around. Turn it around. Fix It Friday just kind of rolls off the tongue. I think Friday is actually probably a better day for people too, but I don't know. All right, so this binding is too wide, but I'll just trim it down. And for a, a Hong Kong finish, I'm just going to sew this right side to wrong side narrow seam, like a quarter inch. And we're basically, all we're doing with this is finishing the edge. So we're not sewing the back seam together yet. And this didn't seem to interfere at all with sewing in my invisible zipper foot. I'm mean, using my invisible zipper foot. 
Bye, Karen. Oh, yeah, that's right. Everyone starts leaving when Great British Sewing Bee is on. I love it. All right, let's do the other side. I was watching Jen Stern before I went live. She was um, fixing a jeans zipper. So she was, um, you know, like a metal jean zip where the zipper pole had come off and she was replacing the pole, getting it back on there and sewing it. And I was kind of surprised she had a couple of people that were, like two people that were like, it's just faster to replace the zipper. The thing is like, <clears throat> so what, you know? It's just kind of rude to go in someone's chat and be like, it's faster to replace it. I mean, she was like literally live doing that on camera. Like it always takes longer to do stuff on camera. You know? And you never know, like maybe you can't do that. Maybe you can't replace it. Maybe you're on a boat. And you, um, I'm about to trim that, but let's just go over the iron. And you don't have a spare zipper. You know? <laughs> Granted, if you're on a boat and it's salt water and you're wearing jeans with a metal zip, you're going to have a bigger problem. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Because if you haven't heard about salt water and metal, you're not going to get out of those pants. All right, we're going to just iron this. Look how huge this back crotch rise is. It is ample. That's a good word, ample, ample. All right, am I getting lost in my pants? I am getting lost in my pants, there we go. Fuzz from my pockets, get rid of that. Yeah, I might, I might just finish these today. <laughs> Is that okay with you guys? What do I do tomorrow? All right, so I'm just gonna grab my... We just need this to go over and just pass the stitch line and get tacked down. So we're gonna, I'm gonna trim off a quarter of an inch this was originally cut one and three eighths of an inch wide. And usually like you really only need about an inch wide binding to do a Hong Kong finish with a quarter inch seam allowance. Oh my God. Let's see here. Here we go. This isn't the one I've I've um, trimmed, right? <laughs> God, I thought I just had the pant under there. Yikes. Let's fix this little edge here. It just kind of didn't get ironed good. All right. Maybe you're on a boat. You never know. <laughs> that used to be a legit thing where I worked, <laughs> you know? All right, so uh, the last step, and we're doing this like technically on the side of the seam allowance that when the seam is pressed open, hopefully I did that right, um, you're gonna see the, well, I'll show you. It's kind of hard to explain. But the seam, the side of the seam allowance that's gonna show on the inside of your pan when your seam is pressed open. So we're just gonna press it along that, that edge there. So here's the cut edge, right, in the seam. We're gonna press, just wrap it around like that. And now we're just gonna stitch in the ditch. So I could have probably even done an even narrower. This fabric is so thin 
that I could use an even narrower piece probably. If you were doing, say, this on something like denim, you would lose a little bit of the width of your fabric, so you wouldn't want it to be too narrow. I'm not being very diligent about my um, ditch stitching because I'm trying to hurry. And it was stitching on the edge like it was kind of grabbing it, but that's a very nice soft way, very low bulk way to finish the edge. And this is the right side of the fabric and it'll be right sides together and then when the seam is pressed open like this it'll turn back on itself like that. So let's do the other side. This is great for like exposed seams too. Alright, we'll do our other one. Sometimes your machine just kind of grabs it and wants to sew it where it wants to sew it. That has to do with like your foot. My foot, because it has the open toe right here, it'll sometimes like put this little ridge right on the inside of this toe and that's why I'm having trouble like stitching in the ditch and I'm not being very careful. If I wanted it to be in this ditch, I would have had to do a little more and instead it's put it right on the edge there, which doesn't bug me. All right, so now we have our back seam ready and we're gonna put the waistband on. Think about how I wanna do the waistband. Hmm, I still wanna do it from wrong side to right side, but with the zipper, that sort of changes things. All right, here's this, this. This. Here it is right here. Okay. I'm going to put our side seams together of our waistband. Um, I, if uh, you're doing yours, like the directions, you just have one continuous waistband. And I'm just using fabric for my interfacing. I didn't use fusible because it would get rid of the wrinkles, the crinkle of my fabric. And I'm going to press the seam open and stitch it down. I like the way that looks and it makes it nice and flat on the side seam. All right, so if I sew <clears throat> the waistband the way I like to that would mean also let's just check my waistband is um, gonna fit <laughs> side seam center all right we're good okay if I sew this on like that And then if I sew this on like that, I'm going to just troubleshoot something really quick. All right. So this is the wrong side. This is the right side. So this is the right side of my garment. And then I put my zipper on. Do I not have a, oh, I didn't have a green zipper. How do we feel about this zipper? I think it'll be okay. 
Okay, so if we sew the zipper on. This. Oh, it goes all the way up here. Can I? I don't think I can. Okay, that's why we're troubleshooting. I think I actually have to sew this on the way I don't like sewing it on. The other thing I was thinking about is what if I sewed the waistband on completely and then I added the zipper at the very end and just turned back the waistband? Why wouldn't you do that? I mean, I guess you, because you can't clean finish. I, I'm down for that. That's how I'm going to do it. <laughs> so in the instructions, it has you sew the waistband on right sides together, right? And then <clears throat> I'm going to trim down the seam allowance a little bit. And then you put your zipper on up to the halfway point of your waistband right here, right? And then when you go to finish this, you're going to turn it back on itself, clean finish along the zipper edge, turn it to the inside, and then you stitch down the inside of your waistband. The problem for me is that I don't really like doing it that way because it's, it's like risky that I'll catch the waistband from the right side and if I sew it from this side then it might not look good on the outside you know there's there's all that kind of thing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean finish my waistband still onto the waist but I'm going to leave the raw edge at the end of the waistband here and I'm just going to turn it back and sew it like to the invisible zipper like that so yes my Zipper edge won't be clean finished with the waistband, but it's still gonna look good, you know? Like it's not gonna be bad, so. Um, the Hong Kong finish is really throwing me off as far as how it looks here. So I'm just gonna trim this seam allowance down a little bit, carefully, so it doesn't get in my way. We pretty much only have two steps left though, and that is putting the visible zipper on and the waistband and the hems, but I'll probably do those later so that I can try it on with my shoes. Right, Libby? Yeah, I mean, I think like, I respect trying to clean finish that top edge of the zipper, but I think what you gain isn't enough for the sake of sewing frustration. So that's, uh, like the impact isn't as big as having a nicely sewn waistband. And you can always add a hook in the, and an eye above your zipper if you also would like to make sure like, okay, well, I don't want any of this peeking out, you know, so. All right, so to recap, I am going astray off the directions now and I'm gonna put my waistband on, just the whole thing. So another, another, if you really don't want the fussiness of a waistband, another thing you could do, um, especially if you're not like, this isn't a formal garment and you really don't need that whole clean finish waistband look and maybe you have a serger or you have a finishing technique you like or you could bind it even, what you could do is fold your waistband wrong sides together and then just sew it right sides together to your waistline, right? So then you're gonna, when you turn it up, you're gonna have this edge right here. So you have to be able to finish this edge, but you could bind it. That would look really nice or you could serge it, um, zigzag it, whatever you want, right? And then go about putting in your zipper. That would be even faster and easier, more of a quick and dirty way as well. So let's, um, I sort of wish I would have thought of this first because I could have 
put this on here and then done my Hong Kong binding along the whole edge, right? So let's, let's bind this edge right now so that we're still in keeping with how the center back seam looks. And maybe we can even do some tricksy stuff at the top to make the edge look really nice. So let's um, take a little piece of binding. We're gonna, we're gonna um, cut it a little longer and we're gonna wrap it around like this. I'm gonna sew. No, I am not sewing it the last way. I need a longer piece. <laughs> I love that I almost just switched the way I was sewing that. All right, we're gonna do a whole thing here. <laughs> That's funny. There's more than one good way to do something. And sometimes it's your mood, sometimes it's your fabric, sometimes it's your speed, your, your, your time constraint. Um, you have lots of ways to do this, right? So we will also Hong Kong bias binding this. Hong Kong finished this. I'm trying to sneak not doing the iron here, but you know, I, I was, I just did an Eska welding session in my guild on, um, oh, uh, marking your garment. Like when you're cutting it out, all the markings, how to mark things like dark fabrics, uh, knits, uh, delicates, like I did all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> and I had done this whole like um, um, thing about, like I bought every single marking tool on Waywack and then I, did a experiment on all of them and how accurate, like how they were, did they, did they wash out if they were supposed to wash out? Did they brush off if they were supposed to brush off? That kind of thing. But long story short, I was looking at the Hera marker. The Hera marker is obviously my like favorite thing to use to mark things with. <clears throat> um, and I was looking them up because I was like, are these readily available? I want to make sure before you know, I say, this is my favorite thing, right? Which I don't even think I said during that. I'm getting to my point. When I was looking those up, there was a marking tool that was a seam presser. It wasn't a marking tool, but it was like a little tool so you didn't have to iron. And it was, I found it in the Hera markers. So in other words, if you are wanting to skip the iron, but you still want to press it, it's like takes the place of finger pressing, but it's a tool. And it looked a lot like my Hera marker. And I was like, <laughs> sounds kind of cool. You know, quilters do that all the time. So, all right, so let's trim this down a little bit. I don't use Hong Kong finish hardly ever. It's kind of funny. All right. So we're going to start from the, I'm going to start from the wrong side of my garment to the right side. We're going to clean finish our whole waistband here. Um, I'm actually going to start from, so from the pant side. So we have this right side of the waistband to the wrong side of the pant. All right, we got it on there. So now I'm just gonna situate it. You just let the machine help me. Let's find my center is right here. So we know we want that right on that seam. It's not a roller. It looked like a, like a plastic scalpel. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't end up looking into it. I just, just kind of like, oh, that's interesting. And I really should have, because I've, it's popped into my head a couple times since seeing it. And I'm kind of curious, like, what is that about, you know? Because finger pressing isn't as, you know, easy as it sounds sometimes, right? And I know how the Hera marker is pretty sharp and it really helps, you know, mark things. So it doesn't, uh, yeah, I guess the roller, I guess the roller would be the same thing, but it looked a lot like my hero marker. So I was intrigued. I really don't need another tool though. Can't wait to get all this pocket 
enclosed, you know. Come on, crinkles. Stop crinkling. All right, that's our halfway point. Still. Let's get rid of some of these little threads here and get them into the waist seam. Everything's lining up pretty darn good considering the crinkle cotton and the fly-by-night nature of my waistband construction and pattern drafting. Yeah, right? I know, Aisha, me too. I'll try and find it and see what's what's happening there, you know? Oh, this one's a little bigger. Let's see if we can ease it in here. Crinkle cotton, do your thing. <laughs> Come on, get in there. I probably should ease it with a stitch. Kind of cheating with the crinkles. All right, uh, we don't need to finish the end of the waistband, so we're just going to turn it straight to the front here and turn it under in top stitch like that. And so, yes, we do have this Ooh, do I think my invisible zipper can go through this? Ah, foiled by my own cleverness once again. <laughs> so clever, I'm not clever at all. <laughs> I'm not sure, do I think my invisible zipper if the seam is out here, look at how nice that looks, except for this, which I would definitely clean up a little bit. Here, let's clean this up a little bit. So, do I think my invisible zipper will sew through? It's only this right here that has to sew through, not all this. That's okay. Your old silver, yeah. Yeah, butter knives are great because they don't have any serrate, serrated. Yeah, it's clover. It was by Clover, Aisha. It, it, you know, it was kind of like that, Diane, but um, I feel like the hair marker's more like that. I feel like, you know, because when you do that crisp fold, you need kind of like a knife edge that you run along it, right? Because the way I was taught in college is you take your scissors, flip them over, and use your handle, you know, like this. This is how I was taught. Boop, like that. But it leaves a black mark. See it? On this one, these do. My other ones weren't so bad. This was more of like a... Um, like the butter knife, you know how like 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 Blue and Jill is saying, you know, because the butter knife is is shaped more like you've got the handle of the knife, right, and then it comes down and it has like a little jog, and it's oh my god, can I draw a butter knife <laughs> like this? It's like flat. So this is not like a, a knife is more like this, right? It's like, it's all in a line. This has a, uh, this is a, like a flat, like foot. Okay, let me get rid of this binding. It's starting to go everywhere. All right, how do we feel about the, do we think it'll go through? I'm kind of, you know, of course want to try. It is, it's like, a, it's a hard plastic tool, but it had, like, you would flat, it was a flat foot. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I should have looked at it before I brought it up, huh? Okay. Just trying to do that little seam there. A 
the little loose thread from the raw edge here. So let's find it and pull it to the, I think I got it, okay. Pull it to the seam allowance. Oh, I need a, a label. I've already picked one out. Where am I gonna put the label? Hmm. Probably need to slip it into the seam right now while we're here. So if I didn't think, what's my backup plan? If my zipper, if I can't get, I feel like I can though, I really do. I'm only worried about the uneven thickness. That's what I think will be a problem. Okay, so let's pin this. Actually, we're gonna first pin it right, no, not on this side. We're gonna pin it on this side first. Because I don't have an iron-on interfacing, I'm just gonna um, make sure that it doesn't shift by pinning along here, right under the fold line. Did you find the tool, Aisha? And what do you think? Did it look cool or do we need it? <laughs> I love that all the tool people are like, where is Nancy? Where is our, our gadget queen, Nancy? I'm thinking about her. Yeah, the bone folder, that's the name of it. Exactly, for the paper thing. I think you're right, Libby. All right, so this isn't, the seam isn't lined up perfectly on my side seam. So I'm gonna line up the seam on itself, not the side seam, because I don't wanna get any like torquing on there. It's the second time I've done that today. Nope, not, uh, not a stiletto. It was, it said it was a finger pressing. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering, Aisha. Will it actually work? Okay, where's the center? It's right there. Let's do the side seam first. There you go. Okay, so I'm just kind of pulling the waistband like this, making sure I don't get any torquing there. These pins are kind of dull lately. <laughs> Plus I'm going through the, um, uh, the sheet and the fabric so the sheet, you know, those are really tightly woven. It's so annoying that the whole bed sheet industry is, and, and I think it's, you know, because of consumers, that they all want like higher thread count sheets. Y'all, we want, we want lower thread count sheets because we want them to be cooler. Tighter the weave, it's like, they're so like non-breathable. I was just buying some the other day. I was like, oh my gosh, 200 thread count. I want the 50 count. <laughs> I want to sleep in cheesecloth. <laughs> Where are my cheesecloth cloth peeps at? All right, so now we're gonna get a nice clean finish on the right side of our pants. So before you stitch, make sure that this whole opening is lining up, especially this right here, the seam. We haven't stitched our back rise, so we do have a little bit of play there. 
you know. Oh yeah, that's a good point, Barbara. Leave it to a quilter to have the logic. Okay, let's take out some of these pins back here. This is so much easier when you don't have to uh, anchor it at the center back first. I have one of those too, Mary. You call it a bed jet. Okay, so I have a funny story about mine because I didn't know what they were called. And um, we call it the elephant. <laughs> because like, so what Mary's talking about, like I have this too, it's like a, a mat that goes under your fitted sheet and <clears throat> it hooks to a nearly silent air compressor type of thing under the bed. And it can warm you in the winter and cool you in the summer. I just put it on in the, the summer months and use the cool feature. And it's amazing. Um, you can have covers on and everything. But the where it attaches to go under the bed, you know, it's like this wide. And it's like this fabric kind of thing. And it looks like an elephant trunk. Like it lo looks like an elephant trunk going under my bed. And so we've dubbed it the elephant. <laughs> Bed jet makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, so you know what? how I got mine, Sarah, was we were looking at beds at um, Sleep Number, and they had them on clearance for a, a, a king, oh no, a twin size, but it was a weird length, like Cal King or King or something, King Tall or something. I don't know. The length wasn't right for most beds. Like, it wasn't a very common length. And it just, so it hangs off my bed like four inches. That's it. But it's under the sheet. Like, I don't even care, you know? That's how I got it. <laughs> so watch for that. And you could get, a, you know, just one for his side of the bed. Oh, I love those, Eliza. God, I love those blankets that the hospital puts on you. The, the, I always called those the toaster blankets because they look, it's like they toasted them. Ah, oh, there's an elephant in the room. <laughs> oh, I bet, Lynn. All right, let's just check our center back here and see how well I did with the weight waistband width. Wow, I'm kind of shocked. This is not something usually I do very well. This one looks wider, but then when I lay it on here, it's fine. Kind of. It's a little... A little wider. I like the wider width rather than the narrower width. So let's just pull this down a little bit. Airflow. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, OR is cold, man. Pull this down a little bit. All right, we're going to stitch the waistband. So I'm still, you know, a little nervous about being able to stitch through this for my invisible zipper, but we'll figure it out. Oh, a uh, label. Where's my label at? I think I have done lost my label. It's like on the floor or something. Or back there somewhere. So let's just pull one out. What do we think? Do I, ha I only had one of those, I think. I mean, I'm kind of tempted to do that one right there. As far as matching goes, I don't know. We did party dress on the other one. Maybe we should do another party dress. It won't go in the waistband. We need something that hangs out. Maybe let's do mine. One of mine. And maybe I'll flip it over. Oh yeah, you know what? I'm gonna do a sewing machine. I love this one.
Okay. We're gonna put this, let's see. It's usually the, um, yeah, it's usually the, the left back, I think. I was gonna put this like right here. Oh, here it is. <laughs> there it is. Okay. I put it somewhere safe. Imagine that. All right, pop our label in there. re -sew. I'm gonna get a few threads in this seam. Okay, now we can stitch this. Here we go. This fabric feels really nice when it's thick. This one is so much like wider. Oh, smart, Lynn. I should have just done that, right? Rather than take it out. Okay, I can live with this. <clears throat> All right, let's sew our waistband. We're on the right side of the garment, so we, we can control exactly how it looks. We don't have to worry about where it lands on the inside. I would like to, it to land like on the waistband, but where's my awl? And prevent the torquing with my awl. Right, Sarah? <laughs> Often what I do is I pin it where I'm gonna put it. Like, oh, I'm gonna put this on the back neck, so I'll pin it to the back collars, pieces, or whatever, on the piece that I know, I have to know about the label first. And this one I hadn't, I had just left it in the bin. So I'm using my awl just so that I don't pull this layer, this top layer toward me. I get a little, I thought I got a little tuck. This fabric is very thin. It, will, it definitely wants to fold on itself. Um, on the waistband, I have the <clears throat> crinkles, the lines are going the opposite way as the body. So I don't really have to worry about the crinkles being a problem. Well, we came a long way today. We went from Potential fitting disaster <laughs> to almost finished culottes. thick right here at my side seams. Not hard to sew, but you could probably hear it. We'll 
threads, poke those up there. So a lot of times when I'm doing stuff like this, I'll, I'll even like over rotate this edge to be more onto the garment this way. So it's falling a little short so that by the time I get down at the end, the machine has corrected it because it's pushing all those layers. All right. Let me see, I think I have a couple more pins. Oh no. All right, that's what it looks like on the inside. So not always perfect, but you know, we already sewed that seam, so we know it's gonna be fine. Looking good. Look at that. I guess we could do the inseam too. I forgot about that. <laughs> right now it's a skirt. All right, let's do our uh, invisible zipper. One thirty. Two hours so far to sew these. Not bad. Here it is. Okay. This is my third time. I've only used this foot twice, so but so far it's been 100% successful. So let's continue the streak. Clear the decks a little bit. Okay, so I don't really need this zipper to be this long. We're gonna sew it to, let's just say like, I don't know, there was probably a notch. So we're gonna go to like right here. And then we'll match the other side to this one. So, okay, so this is the right side. So this is how I want it to go on like that. All right. I don't even iron the zipper first. Oops, I lost my pin here. Like this, put it right sides together like that. And I'm going to pull the, so what if I just did like a, no, I really think, okay, I'm trying, I'm thinking, it doesn't feel as thick as I thought it would now, so that's great. Maybe the zipper won't completely, like the fabric won't close to itself, did I hurt myself? Um, but it won't, uh, I, I think it'll be fine, I think it's going to, like the thickness is fine. I'm already thinking like, do I just want to pull that down like that? But I can do that afterward. All right, let's put this right sides together. And it is this one, okay. I'll pull down the foot. So it's going to pull this little coil like this, it's gonna flatten it and stitch right in the ditch of it, hopefully. I get situated here. There's a lot of pant in my lap. Okay, now it's a little thick right here where the waistband is turned up. So we're just gonna baby it a little bit. It looks like it's crumpling a little bit. Now that I'm just on the fabric for the pant, it, the pant feels a little lightweight. And I think I remember this with the blouse. It could have been probably a good idea to put some interfacing right here. So you can see my, my zipper's ooching to the left. I don't want it to do that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm kind of like pushing it with my fingers this way a little bit, just making sure. <clears throat> it 
See how it's, the fabric's bunching up in there? It's partly why. All right. So let's check it right now. Well, yeah, that worked. All right, so now we can put the other side on. I didn't realize my camera wasn't on me. You guys not gonna tell me. <laughs> I think I bonked it with the um, monitor when I moved it to do the iron. All right, so that's the way we want this. The most confusing part of the invisible zipper is the um, not getting it in backwards or upside down. All right, so I wanna line up my zipper to the other side there like that. Look how much wider this looks. Now this side looks narrower, of course, right? It'll probably be fine once I sew it in. All right, that looks like a good spot, just like that. So let's pin that. And then um, I want to mark down where the end is. That's the other thing that's really nice about a, when you're sewing an invisible zipper to set yourself up for success by stopping the sewing directly across from the other side, it will make the end, the finishing a lot easier. So down here. And you may have marked it already, but just double check after you've sewn one side that you're getting it in the same spot. Okay. I have a zip the, between the pins and the tightness there. Okay. So now this time we're going to use this hole. <laughs> Okay, and again, I'm gonna kind of baby it through this thickness here. It didn't look like it was rolling the zipper. That's why I was kind of looking at that. I hope it did. Now we're gonna be on this really lightweight stuff, so it might act a little differently. I just keep lifting the presser foot up because I can see that the tape is getting pinched in the other channel of the zipper foot because there's two holes right here for the zipper to go through for sewing each side. Release the tension, sew for a bit. And on a fabric that's probably a little like thicker than this, it's not gonna do that. how it did. Moment of truth. Well, the waistband matches at the top pretty good, but look at right here. It's pretty off. I'm not going to probably change that because, um, I really like, I'm not that much of a perfectionist when it comes to some things. I, I might, if maybe if I wasn't live streaming and, and I was just kind of like in the mood, but it would require me taking out this side of the zipper and this waistband and um, 
sewing it high, you know, narrower. What probably happened is that when I was sewing this side because it was so thick, right as I was approaching the waistband, because I can kind of see, you probably can't see, but right here along this folded edge, it looks a little like curved like this. And that probably means it stretched it out a little bit while it was trying to sew through those thicknesses. It's still invisible and it's at my center back and there's a shirt going over it, so. Looks good on the inside. And as far as this little gap here at the top, what I would, I'm would i gonna do is, um, ooh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be kind of fussy to get on and off because of that thickness right there. I'm gonna pull this zipper right here. What I do is I usually pull it over just like this 90 degree angle and I like the fold of the zipper to go to the top. And so when I show people this, I go like this, I just pull it down like this, boink, like this, 90 degrees. And I put the fold at the top like that, rather than um, the other way to do it is fold along the zipper right here, which can end up interfering with your zipper pull. This one's particularly loose. A lot of them aren't like that. So I just pull it 90 degrees, fold it like that, and we're gonna, secure it with the sewing machine. Oh, I should probably, let's sew it my foot here. And we'll go back to our regular foot. Thank you for your kind service. I was telling the invisible zipper foot that. All right, so let's pull it, pull it over. It's better than cutting the zipper tape. As tempting as it is, if you do, I mean, I would, t I would cut maybe this right here, but this is softer usually than sometimes the edges when we cut it. And this stuff unravels like you wouldn't believe. So I just leave it intact just after countless times thinking I was, again, too clever and I shouldn't have clipped it. And then um, because there's a gap above the zipper, I will put a hook and an eye up there if it bugs me when I'm wearing it. So right above the zipper, because see the zipper ends about right here. This particular invisible zipper has a clear stop at the top. And I think in my head, I was assuming this was the top of the zipper right here, but it's this, it's a quarter, almost a quarter of an inch below right there where this little plastic thing is. Hopefully that's not uncomfortable. So I have plenty of room for a hook and eye there. Look at that big gap. It's kind of a bummer, honestly. It should go all the way to the top. I don't know why it does that. It might be a budget zipper. I got these, I, I think it, uh, no, that was the, that was the packaged kind I got like at probably Joann's or something, this one. So, all right, so let's deal with the bottom and our whole rise. But we can't sew our rise, right, until our inseam is sewn. <laughs> but we can finish, we can finish the center back rise. All right, so let's find our back here. I might use the hemostat scissors, Aisha. Let's see, I didn't need them the other day. This is gonna be a problem, I can tell, like getting it on and off, you know? All right, so I'm gonna unzip this past the end and it'll be a little easier to sew it up along the bottom, but I'm actually gonna make sure I have it lined up where I want it first, right here. This is, you usually want an invisible zipper longer than your opening because when the zipper ends down here, it the zipper head takes up so much space in your zipper that you can't get close enough to sew it shut. So you need to have extra tail and usually you can pull the zipper below or above it, depending on how you're gonna be able to address getting the zipper back up again. See if I can 
I'm gonna try and stitch it without having to pull it below the zipper. On this lightweight fabric, it has been kind of easy to do. I can kind of make it do what I want. All right, I'm gonna sew the rest of the fly together. I mean, uh, back rise. It's acting funny because one side of my presser foot is on the binding. There we go. Let's see how it looks on this side. Any strange puckers? Nope, that looks pretty good actually. I can't even tell. It's like right here. I am fine with that. Um, so now we're just gonna cut this off right here and put a little fabric across it so it's soft. You guys are so quiet. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna sew this. Maybe make it even a little shorter. I just take a little piece of fabric. You know, it doesn't have to be biased. I just always have have that, and then I kind of fold it around it and then stitch across it. That this little maneuver was one of the hardest things I've had to teach myself when I was starting chicken boots. <laughs> And I would finish the ends of the zippers for the needle cases. And I just pull it up like this. You could leave it like that. Uh, um, but I hold the overlapped end here together and then fold it in on itself. Just like this. And I try and get it all lined up so that I can just edge stitch across. There are probably far less fussier things you can do to make the end of your cut zipper soft. <laughs> but this is just something I've done for years. I'm gonna pull this side in a little bit. I got really fast at this. I didn't ever have to use my awl. Hold the thread tail so it doesn't look too ugly. There we go. And then That'll be soft against the skin, especially um, right there. Your tailbone area is really sensitive for scratchy things. You notice it. All right, we have the inseam. And that's crazy. My waistband is just done. Doing it that way was a little faster, I think. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe not. We'll do a French seam. What is this? Oh my God, this gave me a heart attack. It is a big pair of pants. There's a lot of fabric here. So this seam here got pressed, got pressed that way. All right, and then this one here, we're gonna press open. Like that. My last seam, these were pretty quick. Considering we had the fitting fiasco, <laughs> that's a new word, I like that, fitting fiasco. Maybe that's what we need for Fridays. <laughs> you could go to Jen Stearns and you can get the good fitting thing, you know, Fab Fit Friday, and then you can come here for fitting fiasco. <laughs> In my head, I'm thinking that it would be smarter to watch her, but in my heart, I'm thinking it's smarter to watch her. In my head, I think you're all more about the drama. Maybe I'll just take tomorrow off. I really need to get back into making 
um, upload videos. I really love making them. And I'm at that point where I'm like, now I'm like, oh, it's been so long. I feel behind and I haven't done any. Fitting fiasco. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying like these went together pretty quickly considering we had a fitting fiasco, you know? That we fixed. Let's hope they fit. We're gonna use the rotary to trim it. It's faster. It's faster, it's less risky than using scissors. My current project right now that I've been working the last couple days is um, I always put everything we make on my website so you can find all the links to all the videos in one place. So, you know, because sometimes your YouTube, it's really hard to find a video when there's like a part one, part two, unless the creator like puts it in the video card at the end, which I no, never do. I should, but I don't. I really should do a lot more with all my things. but. Um, I just feel like, oh, the stream's done and I'm done, but I'm not really done. Um, so I've been getting caught up with those. Most of them are on my website. I'm only like a few garments behind, but I also have been updating my thumbnails and I have to tell you, I did it almost all of last year's, but then I did Vlogmas. <laughs> and that added, you know, 20 things in a really short period of time. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna do Vlogmas. And then I was like, but the thing is like, there's whole garments in here, like the Lisbon cardigan or the noodle head divided basket or a modified sandhill sling or pattern weights. There's a, there's a couple oven mitts. So um, Canvas has like made some really great improvements lately and it's kind of made making thumbnails even more fun. So that's what I've been doing is I have, I probably have like 50 thumbnails to update. <laughs> It's crazy. And then a lot of those I'll put on my website. I'll just replace the ones that are on there. But I replaced the one on YouTube. Kind of like what I did for the bias cut dress last week. I replaced that thumbnail with the dress. And not just the sewing circle YouTube th thumbnail. You know what I mean? Then you know like, oh, I see what this is about. I don't want to watch that. Or, oh, that is something I'm interested in. Because people will say, I can't wait to see it on you. And I'm like, it's on the thumbnail. <laughs> All right, almost done with this pre-pressing. It's the inseam. Not too worried about pressing out crinkles. What if I became only a YouTube creator and I didn't do any Instagram? Can we imagine this life? How do we feel about this? Look at these hems. I sense a disco theme here. All right, here's the end scene. Iron it one more time. I'm surprised the crinkles are actually holding up pretty good to this iron. All right, so what are we doing tomorrow? I could continue to work on my bias cut dress, but I think, I'm not sure how interesting that would be. 
I I want to do a how to draft a camp collar shirt or camp shirt. Um, I don't want to do that tomorrow though. I'm gonna get you guys some resources for that. Well, I'll think about it. I'll come up with some. There's tons of things to do. Oh, I'm, my chair is rolling over my blouse. Oh, my goodness. You missed the fitting fiasco. Yeah, Don, I thought you went to bed. How is the great Brit British sewing bee? I know, exactly, Sydney. I've been really lax on Instagram the last couple of months and I don't feel bad about it. It's really interesting. I don't know if you guys are interested in this kind of stuff. Hi, Charlie, how's it going? No worries. Yeah, that's what everyone's been saying, Charlie. <laughs> I'm on my last seam here, except for the hems, because I'm gonna try it on, but. Yeah, yeah, I think so, Sydney. I, I feel like it is. I have much, like half the followers on there. I think a lot of YouTubers do. It was good, nice. So last year, Instagram said, you know, we, we're we going to go up against TikTok, right? And they gave us all the world of reels, right? And so all of us have been trying to figure that out. And they made the threshold to monetize really low. I didn't really care about that. Like, I didn't really like, I don't know. It's so much, exactly, Sydney. Yeah. So, um... Like I'll look at really popular posts and it has two likes. And I'm like, there's no way this post has been up for an hour and it has two likes by this person. Yeah. I just finished. So, um, so this is just interesting because I ended up like, I think you guys all knew I did this experiment where I was like, I'm kind of curious about the monetization on Instagram reels. So I did it, did the experiment. And basically, if you posted a few reels, anyone posted a few reels and they opted into their, their thing, you'd get about $100 in a month, right? $100. I, that's like not a lot, but it's, it's $1,200 a year when you look at it like that, right? That's like a month of expenses here for me to have my office and run a live stream and um, buy fabric and pay, pay for things and services and all that, right? Internet. And so... Um, I was like, that's worth it. I'll do that a little bit. Then all of a sudden, in I think February or March, they didn't pay out at all and they stopped and now your payment is view based on views. And so, which is so much more in line with most platforms and I'm not gonna get anything, right? I haven't, I, I can't, you have to even make a threshold before you get paid. And so, um, and I'm not like salty about that at all. Like I said, like, YouTube's my main thing. I don't do this for the, it's, you, you, if you're doing YouTube for the money, then you're doing a better job than me. So, um, I thought that was really interesting, but I also what I think what I took away from that is how, what their interest is in, for the user. Like they're, they're more interested in, you know, they're not, they don't want to make it good for us. They want to make it good for them. So it kind of just made me go, oh, you know, one more thing. <laughs> These look cute. They look really cute. I can't wait to try these on. Should I go try them on right now? I'm scared. I'm gonna go try them on. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Well, they're not tight. 
Like, I want to look in the mirror real quick. Oh, wow. <laughs> Very comfortable. They're loose. Not in a bad way, though. Make sure you don't have any mirrors in winter. Oh, no, I don't. It's too late anyway. Oh, really, Sarah? Oh, my goodness. So they're a little loose. Like these just, they're, they're a little loose. I'm okay with that. <laughs> they are so comfortable. We think. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased. I'm glad I sewed the darts down just because, because they're a little bit loose. But I, I, I like how comfortable they are. Here's my blouse. <laughs> they're looking very pajama-like. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. Do these look pajama-like or what? Yeah, I was worried about that, Charlie. I really feel like I need a, a green belt, you guys. <sighs> Look at how full they are. Oh my goodness. I'm feeling a little bit uh, shy about how these look now as a because they look like pajama pajamas, you know? Here, actually, I could do this. You can see my, here's my blouse. Here's my blouse, it has the um, little detail at the waist, little peplum, and really big flowy sleeves. I'm a little nervous about them now. <laughs> they look like a maxi skirt, yeah. I looked at hearts for a green to make a solid belt and I found one that was really close and then I got distracted and I forgot to go get it. You don't think they look like pajamas, you guys? I love how I'm making beach pajamas. And now I'm like, they look too much like pajamas. I don't know if I want to put the blouse on right now. I am curious though. I'm very curious. Should we do it? All right, I'll, I'll do the blouse too. I don't have anything to reflect. The mirror's covered, but I would have been showing in the mirror. You're right. The top is like, it's tighter than the bottom. Oh my God, this, this outfit's kind of crazy. <laughs> the bot top is a little longer than where my, my hand goes into my pocket. Done. Yeah, I like it with the blouse. Definitely makes a statement. It's um, really comfortable. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks like a jumpsuit, great. I have this little flare I need to deal with there. I don't have any uh, jeweler, jewelry. What would you wear? And then here's my comb. I can come away with it, but I don't really have a way to put it in right now. Wait, we'll do this. We'll cheat. We don't have Jan here to. So this is how Jan said to do. It. Oh wait. I know that's what I was thinking too, Rachel. I'm going to do it off the side like this. So, ah, thanks for helping me, you guys, coming along my journey. <laughs> I'm feeling really self conscious, though. Like on paper, I was like, that looks great. No one, like, it'll be like, yes, I'm 30s. This feels very much like everyone's going to be staring at me. I don't know. Drapey fake pearl necklace. Oh. Hi, Yolanda. Maybe I should make the bottom a little shorter. So I could put my hands in my pockets easier. Maybe I should make a purse. No belt? You don't think you need a belt? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I have one cut out here, but it matches. And I think the dark green was a better idea for it, you know? What about the cream? You know? Yeah, I'm not sure about the belt. Slightly shorter on the top. Cause look at how high it comes up. <laughs> so if I made it a little shorter, I could get my hand in a little easier, like right here maybe. Okay, no belt, no belt. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what accessories I have. I have this. <laughs> um, I have a green sparkly necklace. Hey, Anna. Thanks. Do the, this. It's really, the, the camera is not a mirror for me. So it's like the opposite. So I love how the boob of my dress form looks like I have a lump sticking out of my head. <laughs> yeah, green sparkly necklace. I have a green sparkly necklace. Yeah, I won't need a lot. I'm gonna have red lipstick and my hair will be up. It's either gonna be up or it's gonna be like like Lauren Bacall style, but I don't think I can pull that off. So we'll see. It's, it's doing like, eh. let me see if it's just like me sitting here. I think I could actually cinch this in like right here. Remember when I carved that out? Maybe it's just me sitting. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah, the the comb, I'm not sure. But yeah, it's definitely not, you know, anything 
like maybe maybe a plastic of some sort acetate <sighs> well I can't believe I finished this today this, these were so fast to sew yeah I got the, one of the ones from Besame, which is, um, they have a vintage line. So I actually got one from the 1930s line. I didn't like confine myself to that, but honestly, the others, I was like, yeah, they're just not that era. So it's bold. It is crazy to see myself wearing it. So, okay. Y'all are talking about accessories. I have to, it's Saturday to get this, a fancy jade neck. That's so specific, Sarah. I love it. I actually did find a piece of jade in Maggie's things. It's like a long oblong piece of jade. It's the jade is more, more it's bluer, but gosh, you know, I wonder if one of her pieces of necklace and the one necklaces would work. This does not look right with it. So I have, um, no, that won't work. I have this really big necklace, but it's buttons, like home, <laughs> like sewing buttons, and it they were all like made into this like thing. I also have this really cool necklace, but that is the wrong colors. I'll have to figure it out. All right, well, thank you, thanks for all the you know support, you guys, and cheering me on with this. I hope. <laughs> And I'll totally wear this blouse sometimes, just with jeans. <laughs> Maybe my Mitchell trousers, I don't know. <laughs> um, um, I think I'll be live tomorrow, but I don't know what I'm gonna be doing. So stay tuned for that. It won't be this. And now I don't have a, th I made a thumbnail. Why oh, didn't you change the thumbnail for this? So yeah, I wasn't gonna show you guys, but now I, I'm, I had to know too, I had to know too. So well, there'll be, I was hope, really hoping Cricket was going to be here to take pictures, but she's not. Um, they are having a, they have a photographer at the wedding, like where there's like a photo, like a room where you can go have your photo taken. So we'll do that at least too, but I'll take pictures. <clears throat> I'm nervous about it. I can't lie. Oh, all right. I'll see you tomorrow. I have no, no idea what I'm going to be streaming, but we'll be here doing something hopefully interesting. Um, I actually have a style arc shirt cut out. It's called the Tegan. Um, it's knit. I'm pretty sure I could make that. Um, uh, I'll think about it. So thanks you guys. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. And Jan Franklin's really helped me with some makeup and hair stuff. She's not here today, but she's really helped me. She did a zoom with me and everything. So <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, thanks for sewing the windsills with me. We got through that fitting thing and they work, they fit great. So I'm gonna write that on the pattern. Bye.